everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. Thanks for listening. You know, my wife Vicki and I have owned and operated our photography studio, V Gallery, for 20 years now. White House has been our lab for the last 16 of those years, and we could not be happier. White House is a family-run business, just like ours. If you haven't already, check them out at whcc.com. And if you want to drop me a line, feel free to email me at jed at whcc.com. It's no secret that some people are driven to succeed more than others. We see it all the time. There are just some people who are laser focused and super disciplined and tremendously hard workers, regardless of their situation or circumstance. And yes, it may be hard to believe, but those people tend to be the ones who come out on top. Now I'm genuinely interested in why people are the way they are. So when I finally got to meet and then chat with Amanda Holloway, I was surprised to hear her whys, as I was completely unaware of them. I knew she was and had been very successful, but it was an honor to get to learn and understand some of the reasons why she is so driven. There are a small handful of people in the industry that I have not met, but that I've known about for a long time. So there's a lot of people I know about, but it that I haven't met, but there's a small handful that I've never met that I've known for a long time Mm -hmm. or known about, known of for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you're number two on that list of people that I haven't met, but that I've wanted to meet and known about for a very long time. Number one is Mike Cologne. Do you know Mike Cologne? No. So you don't even know him because it's been so long. Yeah. He's a dude from (laughs) uh, Southern California. Never met him. And, and and you're in that boat in that we have a lot of mutual friends, mm-hmm. like a lot of people that I know, you know, you know, mm-hmm. we know right. a lot of the same people, mm-hmm. but we never met before. No. Have yeah. we? Right? No, never. Yeah. Until yesterday, I think. Mm-hmm. Was it yesterday? Yes. And, Two days ago. And I, I asked if you would do this podcast and you said yes. Yeah. So now, now people don't know who you are. So can you tell who you are, <laughs> <laughs> where you're from and what you do and all this stuff? Yeah. So I am Amanda Holloway. I uh, I live in the Huntsville area, which is a teeny, teeny, tiny town outside of Houston, about an hour and a half north of Houston. But my clients are not from Huntsville. They can't afford me. So my clients all come from the Woodlands area. The Woodlands. At least an hour away. Yeah. Yeah. Woodlands and Houston. And yeah. so I've been photographing seniors for probably almost a decade. Really? You know, a whole decade. Which, yeah. Yeah. Never thought that would happen. So, um, but I started out as a juvenile probation officer and I had my son and I wanted to take better pictures of him. Um, yeah. And so I have two degrees, one in criminal justice and one in psychology. And I was supposed to be studying criminals. Wow. <laughs> so this is so, so different. I said, sorry, mom, that I wasted all that money. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But psychology has come in handy with yes. sales. Of course. And things like that. So that that's very helpful. But um but yeah, just north of Houston, making it work, doing it. So criminal justice. Mm-hmm. What that's drew still what my drew passion. you to that? What's what what's the part of you that mm-hmm. drew you to that? So initially? my dad is a cop. Oh. And my husband is a cop. Oh. <laughs> and my uncle was a cop. Okay. And my stepmom was a cop. Okay. And I am um very justice driven. Yeah. I just came out of the womb, like seeking justice really for people. Uh, yeah. And so I think that just for me from very beginning was, and I knew exactly what school I wanted to go to. I only applied to one college, got in, knew what program I wanted. Like I knew at a very young age what I wanted to be doing. You're just, you're just a person that knows what they want. Yes. In general. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wishy washy. No, to a fault. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Um, but I wanted to study serial rapists and serial killers. Is that right? Yeah. That's my jam. I still get pumped about it. Yeah. Well, not even, that's terrible. Not even that, (laughs) but just, I think I'm fascinated because it's such a dark place that people go to. The psychology piece too. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the other piece Mm -hmm. of that. You wanted to, did you want to know what made them tick Mm -hmm. to help them or to stop them or Um, to prevent that kind of thing from happening? Yeah. So like even... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is crazy. So when I die, 
Um, I don't want to be buried and I don't want to be cremated. My body will be going to our body farm at Sam Houston State University to further. I don't even know what a body evidence. farm is. So, What's a body um, farm? donors are dead bodies, of course, but you donate your body and they'll, you know, cut the head off or stuff half of you in a trunk okay. and study what happens to your body. So, if there are certain. Um, you know, maggots will form on the body at certain stages. Okay. Your poor listeners right now <laughs> are going to be like, and we're turning this What about on. <laughs> my, my poor me? Yeah, I know. Well, but like at different stages, bugs come into play and that okay. can tell you how long the body has been there. So for the, okay. Which will give a timeline for when the murderer put the body there. All right. So that's the reason. Yes. I get it. So it furthers criminal research and it I can help gotcha. put people behind bars creating... Okay. Yeah. So there's an altruistic sure. reason for it. There's a noble oh, sure. there's a noble piece behind it. Well, yeah, I'm not going to need my body. At that sure. Point. As <laughs> far as we know, we don't we don't need them anymore at some point. Is this your weirdest We're, interview yet? Oh, uh, it's it's in the top 5. Yes. <laughs> you cracked the top 5. Yes. <laughs> because I think it's funny because I have no idea how to make a segue from that to pricing. Like I'm, you're supposed yeah. to do segues and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, okay. There so is none. <laughs> bodies and trunks and serial killers. Let's go with pricing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But honestly, I do want to talk about pricing because mm-hmm. everybody told me that that's what you should talk about. Like you're, you're also uh, unique in that regarding my experience with this thus far. Everyone has told me that a, I should talk to Amanda and Amanda should talk about pricing. Yeah. Why? Why should you talk about pricing? Why did everybody tell me that? Because I'm unapologetic. You're unapologetic. In my pricing. Ooh, now that that reminds me of something. Yeah. Okay, now I don't like to name names, but this happened the other day Mm -hmm. before I knew you, but I saw this happen to you at a table full of people and somebody made some loud declarations about money this and money that, and then they in jest pointed to you and said... Unless you're Amanda, then you care. Something mm. to that effect. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm getting at? Mm-hmm. And that struck me because I think it's easy for people to say, like there's a balance there somewhere and I don't know where it is, but I think it's easy for people to say, oh, I'm not motivated by money or money isn't that big of a deal mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I can I can get behind that regarding, oh, you don't, I understand that if it's the the entire focus of your life, then you can get greedy and you can, sure. you know, people can suffer as a result. But making money's important, <laughs> if <Yeah>. not necessary <laughs> for a business, right? right. Yeah. So um, the presentation that I just gave mm-hmm. was, I talked about that. So um, probably for the past nine years, uh, I'm not going to lie, money was my motivation. Money was my God for sure for this. Is business. that right? Oh, and I have no, yeah. And That's everybody a big knew confession. that. It is. And everybody knew that. Yeah. And everybody knew that. I mean, and because my thing is I didn't grow up with money. Yeah. Uh, there were things that we couldn't do because we didn't have enough money. I grew up in a little two bedroom I get house. Mm-hmm. And, um, so when I started making serious money, I got a little crazy. And so what did that look like? Let's talk well, about just that for like a second. Flying first class everywhere and oh. five star resorts and whenever I wanted, I, you know, just not a lot of restraint, yeah. not a lot of control, right. and that's fine. I made it. I wasn't going into debt. However, <laughs> um, so I have an awesome kid. His name is Webb. He's 10 years old, yeah. and he has some special needs. Okay. And last year, we found out that he was being uh, physically and mentally abused by his aides at school, <sighs> and we caught it on camera. Oh, no. And um, so... That moment in my life, everything changed. It went very quickly from let's see how much money we can spend on all the stuff right now to make us feel good. Yeah. To I will never allow this to happen to my son ever again. And it just changed everything. And so now I mean and I and I had a retirement account and I was maxing it out back then, but mm. it's different. And so now he is homeschooled and we pay a special needs teacher certified with masters i mean she's awesome we pay her to come in and homeschool him so Mm. now it's not we're spending money on fun things Mm. we're spending money on very necessary things Mm. um so if i don't make money 
my kid doesn't get an education because he's not going back to public school ever. So um, it just perspective. It's a healthy, healthy dose of perspective. It's terrible that it got that bad for me to wake up. Um, But had I not been pricing myself the way that I was for so long, we would have zero recourse in what to do with the situation. Right. None. Right. And that's a lot of special needs parents. They don't have any money to fight a school district. They don't have any money to pay someone to come homeschool their kids. So, well, yeah. it's interesting that a lot of people, okay, so I'm flying off the seat of my pants here, yeah, flying by the seat of my pants mm-hmm. here a little bit, right? Because I, I didn't know that. And I'm really sorry to hear that and grateful mm-hmm. that you caught it yeah. and have made the appropriate changes in direction. But what, what's, what's crossing my mind is a lot of people that even talk about pricing, that even evangelize about mm-hmm. pricing, because I consider you one of those people and I consider myself one of those sure. people. But I don't often think about it in, in terms of, oh, you want to make sure that if something goes down, mm-hmm. you're in a position to do what you need to do. I'm usually like, Oh, you know, you want to be able to save and, you know, provide for your lifestyle and, you know, wherever, whatever you choose that to be. Like, you have to make enough money to pay the mm-hmm. bills. You have to make enough money to save. Like, all of the the typical fundamental frugal things. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't cross my mind very often to say, you know, at some point you might run into something mm-hmm. that rocks your world. Yeah. And that's where I start teaching pricing, actually. I think some sometime, you know... Several years ago, one photographer out there was like, you know what? Let's tell everybody to just start at three times the cost of good and just roll with it. And everyone was like, okay. Yeah. Um, That is the biggest crock of crap that has been sold to photographers in this industry. Tell me why. It's disgusting, actually. Tell me why. (laughs) So for me, and I I have no problem being transparent, we pay $50,000 a year for my son to be homeschooled. Okay. Um, If I'm pricing three times the cost of good on my products, I'm screwed. Right. People have different needs. Families have different needs. If you have six kids, you're going to need more money monthly than someone who still lives at home with their parents in their right. basement. Right. It's it's a completely different set of issues. And um, a lot of photographers start with, okay, I'm going to price my five by seven at this. And then I'm going to price at this, at this. And a year goes by and tax season comes up hmm. and they say, wait, where did this money, where's the money? What, what's happening? <laughs> Right. So it's kind of a blind introduction into mm-hmm. pricing. And they think the whole time, well, I made $250 on that session. I'm doing great. Right. It is crap. It is right. nothing but crap. It's terrible. <laughs> and the way that I teach it is completely backwards. So I give homework to all of my students and I say, you go home right now and you tally up what it costs for you to live yeah. at this standard that you're currently living. Right. And you know what is really sad? Most of my my women that I have come in for, as students, they say, well, my husband handles all that. I don't know. Oh, like they're not even involved. N- have no idea. And yeah. so I start feeling rageful. <laughs> and I'm like, no, women empowerment. Like you have to know. And I think because I'm a cop's daughter and um, my husband was military and now he's a police officer. Goodness. I've, I've been raised knowing there may be one day where you're Husband oh, does not come home. Of course. There may be one day that your dad doesn't come home. Right. We take care of our business and we know what we need to know to keep this family going if right. that happens. Right. A lot of people um, have a luxury that they don't have to worry about that. But anything can happen. Right. Anything at any time. Car accidents. Right. Regardless. Horrible diseases. Right. Yes. Sure. It happens. So um, I kind of reverse that teaching and I explain. And explain to them, like, listen, you don't understand. If something happens to your husband who you are so dedicated to, you know, and and then don't get me even started about retirement. Because they're like, well, we're just going to retire my husband's retirement. Divorce is 50% in this country. Right. You can't. You just can't. And so I teach them to find out exactly what it costs for you to live a month. What is your contribution? Is your contribution $2,000 a month? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yes, okay, I need to make $2,000. I'm like, no, 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 back it up, <laughs> sister friend, because you need to be making around $5,000. 
a month and they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, there's a cost of goods. There's a cost of running a business. And Uncle Sam wants his in the end. So right. he, it's just, you know, it starts. And then once they see it, they cry. Yep. That happened to us. <laughs> because, yeah. Because then it's the, I had no idea. Right. I had no right. idea. The reality I of it do? is powerful. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so and it's I call I say it's like therapy. I got to tear you down mm-hmm. to build you back up. Mm-hmm. But once you know, once you have that education and that concrete foundation, then we can build collections. We can build a la carte pricing right. and make sure that we're hitting that mark every single time. And do that's you, what's huge. Do you think that one of the reasons why so many people don't know is that they really choose not to know because if they don't know then it's not real now that's a strange now we're getting into the psychology piece for you a little bit but i feel like and this is i'm drawing on my own experience Mm -hmm. like i can i can be in denial Mm -hmm. about something and it's like i don't know but i know Mm -hmm. like i know Mm -hmm. that if we're going to use pricing i would say i know that i'm that i am not making the money that i need to make i know that I'm not bringing in what I really, really need to be bringing in. And yet I don't know it. And if I can stay in the, I don't know, you know, all the details mm-hmm. and exactly what that means. then that's, that's kind of a, a happy place of rainbows and butterflies. As somebody sure. said the other day, mm-hmm. ignorance is bliss. That's it. Okay. Yes. So, but you, but it's chosen, mm-hmm. right? 100%. Well, mm, I, uh, here's the thing right now. Um, we have kids that are in school learning the Pythagorean theorem Mm -hmm. and they come out and they go to college for the first time. And the first couple of days, there are credit card companies waiting by the sidelines with t-shirts. If you sign up for a credit card, nobody is being educated about financial anything. Right. And so we enter into this industry, any entrepreneurship, most of us without any kind of financial education. I didn't know Mm -hmm. when I got started. Um, and I remember so, those t-shirts. I wanted the t-shirts. Yeah, right. I didn't think <laughs> about 29.98%. <laughs> oh God, yes. You know what 34% I mean? 34% entry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think a lot of people don't know A, because they aren't taught, and mm. then B, because not knowing means that A, you don't have to do anything, mm. um, and B, it's not scary. Mm. Because I think the thought of retirement and all of that is very scary, and it's confusing. It's so confusing. That's why we have financial advisors because they can figure out the litigations and the new regulations and the new limits to Roths and yeah. and all of that. But people think that, oh, I have to do all that. I have to know what stocks are and I don't have to. Right. No, you don't. Right. You know, and so I think that there is a really, um, and, and the other issue is nobody in this industry is talking about it. Nobody. Why are people only teaching on the pretty Hmm. the editing the shooting the posing none of that means squat if you aren't getting paid for it because you're not going to last right you're going to close up shop right and in some cases you'll be in debt oh so not only will you not last but you'll get done after two or three years and you'll owe 30 grand yep and they're taking loans out for their business because they think that oh i need to start a couture closet now and i'm like no you don't (laughs) no you can right no 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 so yeah it's just um i think that there needs to be more financial education we owe it well, we don't owe it to ourselves. I just give a crap about the industry. Mm. Like I've been starting out and not having any idea what to do. And it was hard. And so I think that just reaching out and being like, look, you don't have to do this alone. There's a lot of stuff you mentioned that then you said you don't need to know about this, this, and this, mm-hmm. you know, stocks and Roth limits yeah. and whatever, like those types of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't need to worry about specifically. <laughs> right. What do you need to worry about specifically? First and foremost, retirement. Um, Get in front of a financial advisor and talk to them about, say, what are my options? Because the younger you start, the better. Mm -hmm. Um, And and it's really interesting because I'll ask a lot of my 
students, I'll say, okay, so are y'all saving money? How are you saving money? And they they say, well, I've got like a thousand dollars in a savings account right. in the bank. And I'm like, well, that's not going to do squat for you over the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. So learning about investing in a way that, because, and when I say you don't have to know about stocks, you do need to know where your money's going. I believe right. in that, but like trying to update yourself on the regulations and rules every single year right. is bananas. Right. <clears throat> but take ownership of where your money's going, who your money is with. I had an incident come up where um, my financial advisor, my old financial advisor that I ended up firing after this, uh, oh. ended up putting almost 100% of my retirement money into government money market accounts. What? I was ill when really? I found out. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. There, there was no diversification? None. It was just all eggs in it that was, basket? I was sick. I Vomit inducing, yes. And so, um, of course, he's gone now. Yeah. And I have a great one, but it was my fault because I wasn't opening right. that statement. I was like, he's handling it. No. Right. right. It was just you have to stay on it and you have to learn a little bit, but it's not it's not hard stuff. Right. It's not algebra. It's not like right. crazy stuff. It's just it's where your money is going and everyone's talking about residual income especially now in this day and age. Yeah. Retirement and investing all that money is the best residual income ever because of compound sure. interest. Right. I can't get that on products in my shop. Right. I, no. So retirement is retirement's huge, of course. If you can save your kids' college, especially with a student loan crisis happening right now. Yeah. I would. Um, and paying yourself first. That's the biggest advice, I think, is just we go out and we buy so much crap. Starbucks, purses, shoes. <laughs> All the things. Yeah. And um, if you only knew how much that would return to you in compound interest, if you just socked it away. Well, talk about huge. the pay yourself first. I get the savings piece. Mm-hmm. And I and I, I don't know anybody that, that thinks to themselves, yeah, I, 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 I shouldn't save more. No, right? Right. Yeah. Like I, I, I think everybody, man, I, I might be giving people a lot more credit. Than, than is due. But I feel like most people would be like, yeah, I should, I should save. I should have a better savings plan that, that I execute. Right. Mm-hmm. But talk about the, for entrepreneurs and business owners, talk about the pay yourself first theory or strategy mm-hmm. or concept a little bit more, because that's, that in and of itself is a bit of a reversal, mm-hmm. right? It's right. like doing things backwards <laughs> a bit. Right. So, um, a lot of people don't have willpower when it comes to money, mm-hmm. uh, me included, mm-hmm. before this horrible incident. Right. And so, um, you know, you think, well, I'll just, I'll buy what I need for the month and then I'll put back whatever I have left over at the end of the month. And it's like five bucks yeah. the, right. or negative five dollars right. at the end of the month. Right. And you're like, where did all that money go? And you look back and you spent, you know, three hours at the dollar spot in Target mm-hmm. and three hundred dollars later, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. Well, crap, that's not where that needs to be. Yeah. So paying yourself first, the second that you get paid, whether it be your business, if you have a regular nine to five or your own business, the second that you get that dividends check or that payroll check, it comes out and it goes straight to a retirement account, a 401k, Roth or traditional IRA, Mm -hmm. whatever you need or whatever you have. Um, Well, and with those, with the... With the pre-tax stuff, yes. it comes out and doesn't get taxed to mm-hmm. those things. Roth, yeah. Which is sweet. Yes, it is. I mean, Roths that, have limits, so. Right, but, but, that's, for but most conceptually, people. that's the thing that I think people need to understand. Mm-hmm. You're also not getting taxed on that right. money. Yep. So the taxes aren't coming out of that. Yep, it grows pre-tax. Which is even better. Yep. Huge. So, and I think if people would have that money removed from their accounts, right off the bat and it's it's not fun living on a budget right. nobody is like yes budget right. time but i have not heard one person on their deathbed saying you know i wish i had bought more starbucks right. i wish i had more stuff over the course of my life <laughs> than the money that i have left for my children right you know right. like that's just because that's what it is right. right and when i say pay yourself first that money that you put into that account is going to grow so yeah. much because of compound interest over time, the money that you pay for that Starbucks, 
is gone in like three hours. Yeah. It's done. Your buzz is over. Right. You're probably buying Starbucks again. <laughs> <laughs> You're buying another one. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, you know, it's it's not worth it. Now, if you have all the money to do all these things and max out your retirement and go get Starbucks, go after it. And I'm not saying, you know, live right on nothing right. because I am a firm believer in creating memories for your children. And, and I'm trying to walk that fine line between putting all the money in retirement and still having money left over to go on vacations right. and travels and birthday, right. you know? Right. Um, so, but paying yourself first is very, very helpful if you have a spendy little problem because it can be really fun and make you feel good. And there's a lot of psychology behind spending and getting new things and wearing new things and having people comment, but none of that means anything. But the concept is essentially paying yourself first and then um, dealing with expenses yes, as opposed to dealing with expenses and then whatever happens to be left over. Exactly. You might get paid. Yes. That's reactive. Be proactive. Right. Yeah. Right. Put that money aside first. First thing. And, and that way, because when you, a lot of photographers used to have a full-time job mm -hmm. and that money came out of their checks and they never saw it and it was right. easy. Right. And then they switch over and they, they become full-time photographers and they say, yeah, I remember, I, I should still probably put into that 401k. Right. Right. You know, that, that was a good thing. I should do that. And then time goes on and it never happens. Right. And they're like, oh, wait, I only have $20,000 to live off of for the right. next 30 years. Well, but on the front end, sometimes it can even seem like they get to a point where they're making more and they mm. think, oh, I'm actually getting paid more. Exactly. But you're not. No. Because you're not taking that money out <laughs> pre-tax even. Exactly. And putting it away right. like what's happening at your other job, mm -hmm. which is which is a big deal. I think what happens to me a lot is, is and I want to see how you, you would address this, but a person comes to me, like if I'm doing a consultation or membership or even a small workshop and someone says regarding pricing, how do I, how do I price my work? Mm. Where, where do they, where do they begin? Start with what it costs you and your family to live right now. Okay. Do the homework. Just do the what homework. What are your fixed costs? <clears throat> yep. So, gro and everything from grocery bills, because I'll ask um, photographers, what's your cost of running a business? And they're like, oh, like maybe $5,000 a year. <laughs> right. I'm like, you're at a conference. <laughs> this thing costs $5,000 just itself. <laughs> your plane ticket, conference. your conference, <laughs> right. and your, right. you know, the, right. the car that you rented over here, the food, the, right. the drinks, like that's 5,000 in itself. Yeah. People don't really sit down and do the work because it's, it's not fun. Right. Um, so sit down and do the work, go through all of your bills, uh, get a very good understanding of what your personal expenses are for mm. your family and what your business expenses are and mm -hmm. separate them so that you can see just how much money is going into that. Do you have a specific resource or app or anything that you recommend to, to use to do that? I use the calculator. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dave Ramsey has incredible resources yeah. on his website, www.daveramsey.com. Okay. Um, really user-friendly. He has an app, a budgeting app too. Mm -hmm. um, so those are great. Um, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a writing down kind yeah. of girl. Like, you like to write I it down. I write everything down and yeah. see it. Yeah. Um, so that's helpful for me. Okay. But once you know, so like if you need to make $2,000 a month now, now that you know that, let's start making our minimum order requirement. How many ever times our session is equal that contribution. So right. if I shoot four sessions a month, why not make my minimum order requirement $500 sure. so that at the minimum, they're not going to spend the minimum. All four clients are not going to spend the minimum. But you're starting, your, your your baseline is your minimum. Yes. You're starting by meeting that contribution mm -hmm. kind of to a point. And it's not perfect numbers, but it will work. Then you start looking at your collections and you think, okay, what do I want my average sale to be? Mm -hmm. If I know I need to make $2,000 a month, why not? Like, let's make my average sale, let's try to make it $1,000 each. So then you're bringing in $4,000 right. a month gross. Right. And you're taking away usually around, because I like to have a 90 to 100% profit margin. That's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty decent. Yeah. And so because, and here's the biggest mistake that photographers make. They don't consider income tax. <laughs> right. They don't. And That's they don't true. put it aside. Right. And they end up filing for bankruptcy. Right. It's terrible. Because they get a huge tax bill that yes. they didn't plan for. They have, and they didn't have right. 
the the vision to say, okay, I know that 30% of this is going to be taxed. Yeah. I have to put it aside. Yeah. If you have a problem with that and you are listening right now, please, please, please go down to any bank and get an interest bearing savings account. Take your percentage of your tax bracket and put the whole amount of money. So if you are a 30% tax bracket person or a 25% tax bracket, anytime that you get any income from anything, put 25% of it in that account. Yeah. Because here's what's happening. If you are paying over in like estimated taxes, the mo- the government's making money off of you instead right. of you making money off of your own money. Right. Put it in an interest bearing savings account, sock it away every single month. And then at the end of that, you're going to have a nice little pocket of extra money yeah. that you can pay the government with. And you'll get a lot back because it's not a full 100% of your tax bracket. It's a hierarchy right. of payments. So. Right. And then you'll, you're making the interest on your money exactly. that you can have extra. Yeah. What do you say to somebody then that says, oh, that's going to require me to raise my prices yeah. or to raise my prices substantially. Yes. And I'm scared to do that because I'll lose my clients. Mm. So first and foremost, if you are concerned about getting a retirement account or paying the government the ta- the income tax account and you have to raise your prices, you should have raised your prices already. Well, okay. Like that already, you know, right. is a massive issue. Right. But here is the thing. I think a lot of people market with their pricing. Stop using your prices as a as marketing content. Mm. That has nothing to do with one or the other. Mm. People are not coming to you because they are going to write you a check for a certain amount of money. Right. They're coming to you based on the experience and the images that you are providing. Yes. And so I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, well, I'm only $99 or I'm only $250. Right. You're using pricing as a marketing platform. Right. Stop. <laughs> no. Quit that. that. Yeah. Your ben- like, what benefits are you giving your client? And right. I, that's another thing, like features versus benefits. Stop listing features mm. of your of your business, mm-hmm. start telling your clients what the benefits are, mm-hmm. and you'll and you will book every single time based on that. Um, but I feel like a lot of people use pricing as marketing content, and it's like no, 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 no. So real quick, just a just a tangent, a mm-hmm. little bit yeah. is what's the, what's an example of talking about a benefit as mm-hmm. opposed to a feature? Yeah. So uh, one thing that I like to do is I always talk to my moms. I even have this in my inquiry guide. So when a client inquiries with me mm-hmm. or a mom does and um, she says, uh, hey, what's your pricing? Well, I send back this massive inquiry guide with pictures and full of everything. And one of the things that I say is the next time that your daughter will be photographed at this production level will be her wedding. Mm. She will be wearing a white dress. Mm. This is a rite of passage. She is about to be on her own and become a woman. Mm. Having portraits taken of your daughter at this time in her life is quite possibly one of the most important times to have her photographed. Wow. That's a benefit. Wow. Instead of saying, well, I offer cool stuff, you know? So cool stuff for one (laughs) seventy nine. You can get this, this, and this. Or instead of saying, well, I offer an album. Okay, Mm. that's great, but take it a step further. So when your daughter is in college and you haven't seen her for four months because she's having a blast with all of her friends, (laughs) you can have this coffee table book and look through it at any time and come right back to this little girl that you remember from this part. It's kind of like digging into the why a little bit. Mm. Oh, for sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. And and it it really places things into perspective, I Mm -hmm. feel like. Yeah. Okay, that that helps. Mm -hmm. All right, now back to the pricing. Mm -hmm. Because a person will argue that the argument is, I'm going to lose clients, Mm -hmm. right? I hope you lose clients. (laughs) Is that terrible? No, no, it's not. But it's it's the common Mm -hmm. response, isn't it? That, oh, I'm going to lose clients. Mm -hmm. And then when you say something like, I usually say, you will. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but I hope you lose clients is even maybe better. I hope you do. Because it you, they need to understand. People need to understand that that is what, yes, exactly. That's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you'll also gain clients. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. So um, my for my pricing, I hope that it turns 90% of people away. Mm, yeah. Um, I you use, use it, it as, as a, a vetting tool. Yes. A, a filter. A filter. Okay. I, 
I don't even want you emailing me asking for my senior inquiry magazine unless you can pay the $5,000 that I have listed on my website. Right. And my average sale is $5,500. Right. So you've got it set up that way. Yeah. Yeah. And so they know that if you go to Amanda Holloway and this is all over the woodlands, if you go to Amanda Holloway, you better be ready. Mm -hmm. You better be ready to write a fat check Yeah. because it's going to happen. Yeah. And so all of my people that are coming to me, they know exactly what they're getting and they know that it's worth it because they're going to write me a check with a smile on their face. So let me play devil's advocate a little bit. Sure. Why $5,000? Because that's what I need for me to have the life that I want to live and mm-hmm. the fa- and for my family to live. Mm-hmm. That's what makes me happy. Why not $8,000? Mm, so that's why I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm poking you a little bit. Oh, here. for sure. Yeah. No, I don't want to price myself out of my market. Okay. Exactly. Like I, my, my largest sale was $19,500 mm-hmm. for a senior session. Mm-hmm. Um, that does not happen often. They had $10,000 in cash and I felt like a drug dealer immediately. I was like, I have to count this. And I counted it three times cause I was so nervous. Oh, it'd be fun just to <laughs> see $10,000 in cash. I called my husband. I said, you have to escort me home because if I break down on the side of the road, I'm going to be mugged. <laughs> you have to escort me. <laughs> yes. $10,000 in cash just sitting there. Oh. And I thought, Okay. Oh and then they word. just stroked me a check for 9500 oh, at the end. Yeah. And I called my husband because all the banks were closed by that time. And I said, Trey, something has <laughs> happened and I need you to come here. And I didn't want to say it on the phone because immediately I was paranoid. And I was right. like, my phones have been tapped. Right People away. are listening. Right. It's happening. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> at the very least, Facebook knows about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I just... For me, that's my happy, I'm happy with yeah. that. $5,000, I'd be happy with $3,500. Right. I'm okay with that. Um, but I feel like, for, and I've and I've made several $8,000 sales. Sure. But I'm happy at $5,500. You're my at top where you want to be. Yeah, and right. that gets me the money for me to make my contribution to my family, make my contribution to my retirement, make my contribution to the future. To the government go, as well. Oh, don't get me started. Well, Taxation is theft, that's all. Well, but um, <laughs> <laughs> That may be the case, yeah. but it, it mm-hmm. does exist. And yeah, you, and, and you, you need, have to prep you for it. You need to do it. Yep, right. and you have to have it. Don't go to jail. Don't go to prison. Right, um, that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, um, but just making that the end result for me, that I'm good with that. Mm. I'm good. If I make more, I make more and that's great. And I do on, on other projects that I have and photographers templates and workshops and education and stuff like that. But for my seniors specifically, I'm good with that. I'm Plug happy. yourself a little bit. Where, where, oh. what, what do you, what do you offer specifically? Like you mentioned workshops and whatnot, but what do you, what can people use you for yeah. essentially? So, um, I have one of the largest senior specific educational, um, sites which is www.amandaholloway.com backslash shop mm-hmm. we have everything from templates and shooting videos posing guides posing videos editing videos um, senior inquiry magazine templates card templates anything and everything that you could ever imagine marketing templates social mm. media templates mm. and what i really love about our education is that we include a video tutorial with every single piece of content. Mm. So I feel like a lot of photographers are scared to buy templates because they're like, I don't know how to change the colors. I don't know, I don't what, to know do how with to, this, like, right. what if she wants this as a landscape orientation right. instead of this? Right. I teach you how to do it in all of the videos. Yeah. Yeah. And that's at amandaholloway.com. Backslash shop. Backslash yeah. shop. Yep. And then um, I have a really big project coming up. Is it a secret? <sighs> Because you just mentioned it. <laughs> um, so I know that pricing is my jam. And I know that I have a lot to offer this industry with pricing. And I think, and I've had, you know, almost 500 alumni come to my workshops. Mm. Um, and they have done some insanely amazing things with mm. their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, earning crazy amounts of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have decided to come out with a pricing course. And it's going to be one of the most intensive pricing courses Ever. I sound like <laughs> Trump right now, right? It's the greatest. <laughs> it's amazing. But it, I mean, I, it, there's lesson plans and modules and you get to watch me at an ordering session and it's split screen. So you can watch me 
explaining oh. the product and watching their reaction. Oh. And it's just really, really intense. I was like, how intense can we get here? And it's intense. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I'm tired. Okay. We're very, very tired. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I've been, I've been working on it for two years. Awesome. So um, it sounds substantial, robust. Yeah. So, Good. but it needs to be. I mean, pricing. Right. I get really upset when people are like, "Oh, here's a pricing guide, and it's like 30 pages." I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Right. This is how you put food on your table for your family. That's a yes. lot more than just than just what you have here." Right. So, and people need to understand that. So, there's it starts from the beginning. It starts from the self analysis and the financial analysis of your family, and it leads you all the way through to product delivery. I do think it's something that needs to be talked about more. Yeah, I appreciate that you're out there making it happen. Yeah, um, I think that you're doing a, a big service to the industry. Oh, thanks. And I applaud you. Thank you. I just I remember what it was like to start out and not have a freaking clue. Yeah, and it's that constant turnover of pricing like this isn't working for me I've got to do it again and then oh, this isn't working for me I've got to do it again right. and it's just it's insane and it shouldn't be that hard right and we're all in the same boat and it shouldn't it just shouldn't be that hard well in reality it's not that hard right it, it's not near as hard as what it seems mm -hmm. when you're in that place absolutely you just got to get up and make it happen yes and yeah and that's the thing and that's what I always tell all my students I say Listen, I give you all the tools. I'm giving you the wrench and the screwdriver right. and the hammer. I'm giving you all the tools, but right. it's up to you to go home and actually do it. It's right. like Ikea. Right. Let me be your Ikea. <laughs> I'll give you this big box of crap, <laughs> but you have to go home and turn it into a couch. <laughs> I would advise not doing that with a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so they, but I have a lot of students who have done awesome things. And sometimes I'll get emails later on in months and, um, I'll get an email from one of my students that says, listen, you didn't know it at the time, but I was in an incredibly abusive relationship and I was able oh. to leave my husband yeah. because of the money that I started making right. after you taught me or, um, you know, I was able to put my kids through college without any student loans right. or my husband lost his job and I was able to carry us to until he found the us family. Yes. Right. And right. that for, like, I have chills right now. Yeah. I actually have chills yeah. because that is what owning your own business is all about. Mm -hmm. I feel like, like nobody goes into it because, Oh, it's, you know, like I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to make any money doing this. I'm just going to spend the rest of my life doing this. It's going to be great. And then the bills come and you think, well, I can't pay for right. my bills with likes and right. engagement on social media, <laughs> yeah, which I love like social media. Woohoo. Yeah. That's what, you know, helps you get money, but right. that doesn't pay the bills. And right. so learning how to, price yourself and use your current financial standing as a platform to jump off of is one of the most important things that you can ever do for your business. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. This, this was, was awesome. Well, I appreciate it. This, uh, this, I was honored. It's been an honor to have you on as a guest. Finally. Yeah. I, I this is my first podcast and I'm probably screwed now because all the other ones are going to suck. I'm going to be like, you're not Jed. I'm sorry. We can't do this. <laughs> I am flattered by that, and I also don't think that is the case <laughs> at all. <laughs> we'll see. I'll let you know. I'll email you. <laughs> that sounds good. Have a wonderful day, and Thank thanks you again. So much. Thank you.